Hey everybody, welcome back to the MN Homestead. Today I want to teach you a little bit about wild ramps. First thing you need to know is they are absolutely delicious. So what is a wild ramp? A lot of people refer to them as wild onions, wild leeks, even wild garlic, even though it is not technically onion or garlic. I believe most of that comes from the fact that they smell like a delicious combination of the two. So when we first got our land about two years ago, I was wandering it, of course, as I still do all the time now, um, just to you know, learn everything about it and see everything there is to offer. We had purchased it in a very cold beginning of March and there were no ramps or anything about yet. So it had been a couple of weeks, maybe a month or so after we had it, the spring was starting to spring and all of that. And I was wandering this way, I'm a fair ways back on the property and all of a sudden I started smelling garlic. I am a garlic fanatic. I will eat a clove just straight up. My husband thinks I'm nuts, but then again, he's nuts. So <laughs> what does he know? Um, but I came across these vast expanses of these big green leaves. And I will have a couple of pictures to show you as well. They come in big clumps. And it took me a little while to figure out that that was the source of the scent. Um, I did a little bit of pulling off the leaves of a bunch of things around me and kind of squishing them up and smelling and figured out what it was. They are wonderful. So I've been picking a couple here right along the stream. And what we have is a fully edible plant. So what I have right here is the bulb. So this can be very small, it can be very large. Um, and then we have the stem and the leaves. I posted a blog post about these not long ago and I will put the link in the description so you can check that out and read about some of my very favorite recipes that I make with these. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about how I harvest these and the sustainability that I try and use because since these are so delicious, they are getting way over harvested because the farm to table movement, which is amazing, uh, is having a pretty large impact on these guys. So I'm gonna bring you over for a close-up, I'll teach you a little bit more about how I harvest. All right, so I was mentioning they come in big clumps. So I have a huge plant here. It's got a bunch of different, um, so as I was mentioning, these come essentially in big plants. Multiple leaves will come out of one bulb. What I like to do when I forage is go on the edge of um, the streams and whatnot. The soil is more moist. It's easier for me to dig in. As I was mentioning, the farm to table movement, while wonderful and delicious, is causing a lot of problems for wild ramps because they are wonderful to eat. So what I do when I'm harvesting is I reach really far in and I'm pulling the root out so I can show you, but I typically try to leave the root in the ground. That way the plant will replenish itself. So I've got the roots here. I normally have pretty long fingernails. My thumbs are pretty worn down right now because I've been doing some harvesting. But when I am digging in the dirt, what I try and do is slide my thumbnail in there. So what I did is just right along the base between the root and the bulb and leave this in the ground. That way, it can come back again. So I'm just gonna kinda tuck this back in there again in a minute when I'm done foraging a few more. Another thing that I do is I try not to take too many from one spot. So I'm gonna take a couple more here. I've already done a little bit of digging, as you can see, into this plant, but I'm gonna move on after I get one or two more bulbs here. So what I do, take my finger, and I slide it right along the stem and follow it straight down. This is why it's so nice to be doing this in more moist soil. 
Obviously you cannot feel what I'm feeling here, but basically I am searching along the edge of the root with my finger, trying to find where, excuse me, the end of the bulb with my finger, trying to find where the root is. And then what I'll do is I'll open it up a little bit more with my finger and then try and slide my thumb in there to break that root off. So once again, I'm following this guy all the way down. I'm going in on a couple different sides to make sure that I get a nice area. And actually I may be able to take this one off the root just with my finger. There we go. Nice fat one. So I've got this rinsed off here, peel a little of the extra off. And so once the camera refocuses, you will see this is a nice big ramp. I also, when I'm foraging, look for thicker stems, longer, bigger leaves, because then I know I'm picking a more mature, so it's gonna be a little tastier. It's not gonna be sweet, but it's not gonna be quite so tart as the little ones. So I'm gonna keep foraging here for a while. A couple other things I wanna leave you with if you are out foraging for ramps. They are sweeter earlier in the summer. They get a little bit more bitter. I don't know if bitter is the right word because I don't feel like they ever get really bitter. But um, they get less sweet as the summer goes on. Um, when you are eating these, feel free to have the bulb. Just like that, oh my God, that's so good. Um, these can be chopped up with your salad greens and they'll make just a slight, sorry, I'm chewing. Um, they'll make just a slight tang into your salad. Um, and you can eat the entire dang thing from that bulb that I just chomped on all the way to the end. So if you go foraging for ramps, please make sure to do so sustainably. Attempt to leave the root in the ground if you can. Use the entire plant and never pick more than 20% of what you have available. And that's gonna go for anything that you're harvesting. That's going to be if you are getting a mushroom, that is gonna be if you're harvesting ramps, anything at all, you wanna make sure you leave at least 20% behind because we really, really need to be sustainable with everything that we have. So, with that in mind, I hope you enjoyed the video today. Please make sure down below to subscribe and then hit the follow button so that you can check out everything that we're up to. Also, I mentioned before that I do have a blog where I posted some of the great recipes that I have. You'll find the link there as well. But the blog is themnhomestead.com pretty easy to find. Um, and also you can find me on Instagram at, at the.mn.homestead and you'll find updates there every single day about all the fun things we're doing, the beautiful sunsets I'm seeing, and all of that. So please make sure to check me out everywhere that you can and we'll see you next time at the homestead.